The idea of diversity is, in my mind, a pretty simple idea. The goal, to get people from many different backgrounds together to form a harmonious and tolerant community. So simple, right? Wrong. I cannot count how many times I have been the only person of color in a room. And to make matters worse, I have to then become the spokesperson for everything black ever. I've even been asked questions about weave, which is fake hair that black people use to extend their real hair. But as we can all see, you know, I'm not what you call an expert. But getting back to the point, situations like these are very common for people of color of all ages. These situations cause discomfort with being the only person of color in a room, a feeling of isolation, and more problems that affect them greatly. However, there is a deeper, more pervasive problem that always goes unnoticed. See, in response to the lack of diversity, people of color feel the need to prove themselves as worthy. See, when you're the only person of your kind in a room, you feel the need to prove yourself and to everyone in the room that you are just as good as them, regardless of your race. But in a society where being white gives you an advantage, what do people of color do in order to level the playing field? For many, they go through a cycle of change. This cycle changes the way they dress, speak, act, in order to mimic the traits of white people. We basically become advanced actors. See, I did there, it's because my title, you get it. Acting white, in order to get that advantage, that they are seemingly born with. But these changes have a profound effect on the lives of people of color. It can cause them to question their identity later on in life. So, where does this cycle begin? For many, this cycle begins early in their school life, so elementary school. In those years, the teachers in our lives start to become the people we look up to the most. They even start to become the people that we want to be when we grow up ourselves. But for people of color, these teachers are mostly white. In America, only 7% of public school teachers are black, according to a US Department, of US Department of Education's National Teacher and Principal Survey. And there are about 3.2 million public school teachers. So, Doing the math real quick, sorry, sorry guys. 7% of 3.2 million is 224,000. Comparatively, in the same survey, they found that 80% of public school teachers were white. So, do the math again. 80% of 3.2 million is 2,560,000. Converting that to a ratio, I know, I know, math. For every 11 white teachers, there is one black teacher. My math teacher, who happens to be white, would be so proud of me right now. <laughs> but the main thing to take away here is that for many people of color, they are never seeing teachers who look just like them. In my own experience, I've only ever seen five teachers who've had a dark complexion like mine. And that's including all of my years in school. So that's a lot. So because of this, we feel the need to change ourselves. Because we feel as if black people are less worthy. We don't see them in teachers. So we feel, that we feel as if we cannot be successful because we, don't, we do not see them. That lack of diversity really affects our lives. There is so much more, thanks to society. Society, along with lack of diversity, really enforces that idea that being black means being inferior, and that the white, the white race is the best race. 
looking at our history, that idea has been very, very common for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it still is today. Take, for example, police brutality. In an analysis run by mappingpoliceviolence.org, it was found that in 2018, black people were three times more likely to be killed by police officers compared to white people. If the people whose job is to protect me are killing my people for no reason, and sometimes even because of the skin color of my people, then that just tells me that black people really are inferior and that we are less worthy. And I even have to believe that myself. This effect is very evident in a study run by Margaret Beale Spencer, a professor at the University of Chicago. The study showed that most white children and even some black children exhibited a white bias. They were showed pictures of cartoon characters with lighter complexions and darker complexions. And the children gave positive attributions to the cartoons with lighter complexions, but negative ones to the cartoons with darker ones. So, now after being filled with all these ideas and biases and prejudices, people of color slowly but surely go to that cycle of change. And in the end, we get what my old friends used to call me, keyword old, a burnt Twinkie. You know, black on the outside, white on the inside, you, you get it. But change comes with a cost. What happens is, for people of color that go through the cycle, their mental health starts to deteriorate. In a process called John Henryism, this process describes an expense of high levels of effort in order to cope with prolonged stresses that result in accumulating physiological costs. These stresses stem from pressures from people of color's families, friends, and themselves. From their family and friends is stress to act normal. They feel as if we betray our black culture by taking up the expectations of white society. They ridicule us for how white we talk, dress, act, every single day. And from ourselves, it's stress from an inner struggle between keeping up this act or accepting who we truly are. Now, to combat these stresses, we stretch ourselves thin in order to please everyone around us. But that just leads to overexertion, which then leads to hypertension, AKA high blood pressure. No wonder African Americans are at the most risk for it, if more than 40% of African Americans have the condition, as reported by the American Health Association. So now, you're probably thinking, we get the problem, but what can we do to help solve it? For one, we can make race one of the few issues that is always at the forefront of our minds. We owe that to ourselves as Americans. We can advocate for the hiring of more teachers who are people of color for all schools. We can address our own biases and prejudices that we unconsciously have against people of color because not all of us live in subsidized apartments. Create a society where people of color no longer have to act white, where, where we no longer have to play the white game that has been installed in society for hundreds and hundreds of years. I dream one day that all people of color can grow up and see people who are just like them. They don't have to look to you know, actors and the social media, they can see it in their own schools and really experience it rather than seeing it on screen. Create and really believe in themselves and grow up to believe that being who they are is okay. And being who they are can give them that successful life that so many people only think white people can get. And hopefully one day, with the help of all of you, all of us, that dream can become reality. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.